Hey guys, it's Amy at Zoe Beck, and I'm going to do my week clearing update for, what is it, October 24th, 2021. So, um, this week was kind of a mixed bag, um, it just, just was, work was kind of up and down of things, you know, it was just, it was, it was a week, anyway, but, um, my hearing though, or my, my ear that I had, that I, um, had trouble with for the last four months, um, much got better partway through the week. I would say I still had a little pain early in the week and then it was still going in and out my hearing. Um, and then finally about Wednesday it kind of settled. So I've been pretty good <laughs> since then. So I'm hoping we're done and it's just going to be fine from now on. We'll see. But, uh, so that helped and it also enabled me to listen to audiobooks again at work, um, because I was kind of missing that. I mean, not that I do it all the time, but I do it for, you know, when I do certain projects where I don't need to, where I can, I, I can, what I'm doing is so mindless, <laughs> I can listen to it. Anyway, um, so it was nice to be able to do that again. So, um, and I'll talk about those in the books that I, I've got, or I'm in the middle of right now. So, um, I think that's it. I don't think I have anything else. I keep thinking I did, but oh well. <laughs> If I think of it by the end, we'll talk about it then. Um, so let's talk about the books that I finished, the ones I'm in the middle of, and what I think I'm going to read in the next week. <laughs> so um, did I finish this on Monday? Yes, I think I finished this Monday night. So this is Powers of Darkness, um, the lost version of Dracula by Bram Stoker, Stoker and uh, Valdemar Asmundsen. And this was translated from the Icelandic... Um, by Hans Corneille de Roos. So um, this is again that interesting story of a version of Dracula that is radically different from the original. Um, Bram Stoker um, got paid to give his story to um, a newspaper in Iceland because of the way the copyrights and things worked then he could do that. And so he um, he and he had Val Amundsen I don't know if I'm saying that right, sorry, um, who had his paper in Iceland and had him and had him translate it into Icelandic and then, or so that it could be in the paper. And it was published between 1900 and 1901. So it still counts as Victorian, even though it's kind of a weird twist, as I said, because it's a translation of the original work. So I'm going with it, sorry. But uh, again, so, <laughs> but it's really interesting because the, story there's controversy on how why he was given the version if this is the version that Bram Stoker gave to him why it's this version and not the what Dracula is to us in our version in the English um version <laughs> and uh or is it the translator just took a lot of liberties so there's a lot of um they're doing a lot of research on that um to try to figure out what the heck happened because it's really interesting because the first part is is uh was really uh, is actually longer than the part, um, the first book part with uh, Jonathan Harker at the castle. This is actually Thomas Harker. They changed some of the names um, when they did the translation to Icelandic. But, um, oh, it was just really interesting. There was just the way the differences. And um, I really liked the changes in the beginning part of this. I'm not saying anything against the original. I just think it was very, a different take. Like it was, there was just a lot of different, uh, way that the characters talked about things and what their, um, some political stuff that was put in there that I didn't expect. And then, um, and it didn't have the three, uh, the three vampire women. They had, there was only one and it just, and it, uh, it was much more adventuring of Harker going through the castle. It was just, it was different. And I, I really enjoyed that part. And it was about two thirds of this book. And then the last third is really just an outline of a way the novel could go, but not the way Bram Stoker did the novel. So I'm, I'm really confused on how this all came about. I still, I mean, they just, they don't, we don't know all the, we don't have enough evidence either way, but I mean, it looks like the translator took some liberties in a lot of things and then he just kind of got tired of the story and he just I think he just kind of wanted to get it done I don't know it's really weird um I still think it's not I'm not I would not say that this was like a great book overall because again it does go downhill really quickly I did like the differences because it was so different from Dracula it was it was like a whole nother story so that's why they give it a name powers of darkness that comes from Dracula um so I really it was really interesting read I'm glad I read it 
Um, it's not like I need to read it again, but I just, I thought it was so weird and I still, there's so many questions on why this version was the one that was published and it was really interesting because again, it's, it was written in English, it was translated to Icelandic and then it's translated back to English. And so I just, it was a really interesting read. Um, if you're definitely, if you like Dracula and want to see a different take on it, that's kind of influenced with Brom. I'm not sure. This is a weird book. So anyway, I just, I did enjoy it though. I'm glad I, I glad I got that and read that. And again, I'm counting it as a Victoria read. <laughs> anyway. Um, and then the next book I finished was on, I think late Thursday night, <laughs> I stayed up to finish this, was Magic Breaks by Alona Andrews. So again, I'm buddy reading the Kate Daniels series with Tia and all the books. And this is book seven. Um, oh, I really enjoyed this book. This book, this, this was a book that, um, they had a, that she has a, a note in the beginning that kind of freaks me out about what was coming and because they hadn't done like an author's note like that in the beginning. And so this was a book that just, I was like, not sure where it was going to go and what was going to happen. And it never did things I thought it was going to. I really, because I don't know, um, much, I mean, I got the Kate Daniels series was one of those, I started the first book, um, Magic Bites probably close to when it came out, like a couple of years after it came out. And I just never continued, even though I bought some books for it. And to come back to it now, all these years later, and I've kind of missed the whole, as I said, I missed the whole hype on it. I just didn't get to it. And, um, I just, it's, there's, I, I know other people like, no, like they go, oh, well, yeah, I heard rumors about, it. I don't remember. I don't know anything. Anyway, I'm rambling. Point is, this is again about, um, it's an urban fantasy, uh, about an alternate Atlanta, where um, magic comes and goes and flows. So when the magic is up, um, none of the technology works. And then when the magic is down, then technology can work. So it's kind of this hybrid world and where people are living who are shifters and masters of the dead who um, can control uh, vampires and, and then uh, people with magic. And Kate, um, in the first book starts out, um, she's a mercenary and you know, she takes on jobs and stuff. So, I mean, again, it's by this book, this is just so many things happen in this book. This is definitely close to the top of the one of my favorites. I still think the one right before this, um, which of course went right out of my head as soon as I said that, <laughs> Magic Rises, I think is still my favorite favorite. But again, I won't, I don't know for sure yet, but this is really close. Like it was, it was so good. And I'm so excited to continue reading the series. As I said, um, Tia and I think we're going to try to get it done by the end of the year. So we'll see. Um, but I can't wait to pick up the next one. I am um, really excited. I did read after this one, there are two little novellas. or Well, one's a novella. One's like a short story scene kind of thing that are in Small Magics, which is one of the little compilations of uh, short stories and stuff uh, by um, Alona Andrews that has the current point of view number 10, which comes after this one, uh, which was really good. I really liked that, that edition. And then um, there's one from Jim's point of view, which I liked, which was, was, it was really short, but it was cute. I mean, are really important to see his point of view for that. And I did like those. So I did read those too. So I, even though I don't have, I don't, it, they're just eBooks and they're just little shorts um, that come as I said, we're trying to hit all the little things. <laughs> they have a lot of extended universe stuff, um, which I'm really, uh, like to read all that too. So anyway, um, really enjoyed that again. Can't wait to continue that, uh, series. And then, um, what did I read? Oh, <laughs> we'll get to my DNFs in a minute. We're going to talk about a lot of these. These are all library books that I, I finished yesterday for, I didn't really participate in Dewey's readathon. That was this, um, was Saturday, I think for me it's 5 a.m. to 5 a.m. Anyway, from Saturday 5 a.m. to Sunday 5 a.m. So technically I finished four things <laughs> during the Deweys. They're all quick and easy and um, I didn't count pages for them like in my reading, but I put them on, you know, Goodreads and stuff, but, or my, the two books I did, not the manga. But anyway, so let's, um, I did um, read Lost, The Lost Spells by Robert McF um, Farlin and Jackie Morris. So I saw this, I think, on Chanel and Intentional Life. And um, it just has really pretty pictures and poems about some nature stuff. And I, I did like this. I just, I'm not a poetry person. I will admit that. But it was really pretty. And so I did love the last poem. It was my favorite. Um, Silver Birch. Is it Birch or Beach? I think it's Birch. Silver Birch, this one. This was my favorite of the of the sequence. Um, 
but I really liked them overall. They were, I mean, again, I'm, I'm not much into poetry, and but I just loved all the pictures and the things they talked about the animals and the nature things was, was really well done. So I did, um, I did read that. So again, it's not much to say about that, but I, I'm glad I, I did that. I then uh, finished um, a manga that I had started sometime this week, and so I, I finished it, was Love on the Other Side, uh, Nagambe short story collection. So this is the um, manga artist and um, writer for uh, the Girl from the Other Side series. So I saw that there was a collection of short stories, so I thought um, I would get it. And they are just as weird as the Girl from the Other Side. So if you've read that series, you probably want to read this too because they're all, sh they're short stories. Um, again, they're the manga, but there are different monsters with with uh, humans kind of mixed. And uh, just some of them were, just, this was a sweet one <laughs> on the front cover. Um, I did like them. I don't love them. Like it's not like a book I, I want to keep or would want to get one. But I really enjoyed it, and I'm glad I, I read that. So that was that was kind of fun because again, it's it's monsters and kind of um, more talking about what people um, like handle what's monsters and what's not kind of thing. Anyway, I just I really I really enjoyed that. So I'm glad I read that. And then I did get another another uh, um, volume of Kami Can't Communicate. Um, this one. Oh, did I say this one? This was translated. Let's see. Here. Translated by Adrian Beck. Sorry, they, she she did all the one all the girl from the other side, and then this one's by Tomohito Oda, and this one's translated by John Weary, I believe. Uh, let's see. Here. Where's my translation? Yeah, John Weary. So anyway, so this is volume fourteen. So don't start here. So this is just again a cute high school um story and again i've been reading these from the library um this is one that i think came out this summer so i finally got it number 15 just came out so i'm like number eight on five copies so i hopefully will get it next month and then that's number 16 is coming out in december so i don't know if that's the last one but that's as far as the <laughs> copies go at this point um i haven't looked into how long this one is but again it this is about a, a young woman at, in high school who um wants to make friends because she has really uh, high social anxiety kind of thing and she doesn't like to talk in front of other people. And uh, so she makes friends with Tadano and she, uh, so he helps uh, Kami uh, make friends in school. And it's just, it's a sweet thing. It's really cute. I mean, there's some really outrageous scenes as well, but it's really a cute one. Again, it's, I don't know. I don't know why. Some Most of the high school ones I don't connect with, but this one I have. So I'm just going to keep going with them as long as I keep coming out from my library. <laughs> so, but I got that done so I can give it back right away. So I know there's people waiting for the copy. So um, I read it right away. So I didn't hold on to that. And then I did read uh, The Lost Words by Robert McFarlane and Jackie Morris again. Again, Jackie Morris is the one who did all the artwork. Uh, Robert McFarlane did all the poetry. Sorry, I didn't say that in the last time, but they did the Lost um uh, the Lost, what did I just say? The, what is that friend I just read? Lost Spells. So this is Lost Worlds that came out um, in 2017. So I remember seeing everybody have this book. Um, most of people in the UK. And I mean, it was gorgeous, but I just never, you know, got it. But it's just, it's, um, it's, it's again, it's really big pictures. And, uh, and then, um, well, that's the introduction. That doesn't count. But like, they have really, like, that's one of my favorites. Um, but then they have like stories or they have a poem. Oh, I can't get to the right page right there. So then they have a poem. Some are short, some are longer. Um, a lot of times they will, and in the other book, they would spell out like acorn. So the first letter of all of, of those are like the words are, you know, from the, where they're talking about. And it's just, it's talking about a lot of nature things and animals. And it was really, really, again, a beautiful book. I'm glad I looked at it. Poetry is not my thing. Um, oh, I can't remember. I know I had a favorite in here too. I just, I'm not sure which one it is now. Um, yeah, I don't remember which one was. I think, was it one of the, it was like, again, it's like, I think they like the back one, the, like the very end ones. Um, the Willow was one of my favorites. So, and then, so, so, so. anyway, anyway, so, um, 
that was again another library book I got just and then got it real quick and then I read it right away. So I read those all for Dewey's. So I think per, I did pretty well on that. So then let's talk about, let's just get my DNFs out of the way. Let's do that. Let's, let's go for those. So, um, I have decided to DNF the watchmaker of filigree street by Natasha Poli. I have no desire to pick this book up. I still like, I just, I it's been over a week and I just don't care. And I don't know what it is about this book that it's just, it just didn't grab me and it didn't like part of it did, but not enough. Like it was just a little tug, but not, I, I, I don't, I don't think I'm going to keep this. I think I'm just going to get rid of the book, um, at some point, but, um, I just don't want to continue. And I have too many books, uh, really, <laughs> I have too many books to be forcing myself to read stuff, um, that I'm not enjoying. And I, I was not enjoying this. So, um, I'm going, I did get to 120. Oh, well, I know some people love this book, but it is just not for me. I, and I can't even really, really pinpoint why, but it just, it just did not click with me. So I, it, again, it has to do with Nathaniel, who is a telegrapher and he kind of gets involved in 1883 and four kind of dealing with people, um, dealing with, um, a bombing that goes on and he is given a watch that has great significance and actually saves him during the bombing. So then there's questions on who made the watch and how he got it. And, um, there are some interesting, inter interesting, um, things in here. I just, I didn't like the way it was put together and it just didn't, didn't work for me. So, um, I think a lot of other people like it. So I think it's just me. And then another one that I'm really sad that I'm DNFing, but I got 50, 53 pages in and I just was like, I can't read this. And this is just my, I think it's my humor. It's just not, I mean, this, this is not my humor. So I think that is why this not did not work for me. And I think I'm kind of worried about another book that's considered humorous for a Victorian, re um, a Victorian read because of the way this is, I'm afraid that one's going to do the same thing. And I'm just going to be like, no, I can't do this. And this one's the diary of a nobody by George Grossmith. And, um, I think the illustrations are done by his brother, Whedon, um, Gross Smith. So this is, <laughs> I'm going to say this is absurdist fiction and it has to do with, um, Charles and Carrie and their life at the laurels. And it's just like a day to day kind of journal of the things that happened to him. And they are absurd and it's just absurd upon absurd and just spirals for me. And I, I mean, I made it 50 pages out of a hundred and 160, but I just couldn't do it anymore. I just, I think, I think you have to be in the right mood for this. And I think you also have to want to read about absurd, um, instances, things that just, it just spirals. And I guess I, again, you have to understand, I do not like uh, that kind of comedy, um, in movies or in, in, again, I don't watch sitcoms. I don't do any, I don't, I'm not big on comedy that way. Like it's, it's just, <laughs> I like my comedy in action where it's different, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And it just, for me, this was just, it was everyday kind of stuff, kind of absurdity. And I just, I know people love this and I, I understand but I could not force myself to read another hundred pages of this just to finish this book out. So I DNF this, which is sad. Um, but at least I tried it. I got 50 pages. I tried it and uh, that's it. So whoops, can't love everything. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so, um, then let's go to the books that I'm in the middle of. We'll talk about the two audio books I'm in the middle. Well, okay. I'm, I'm technically, I'm technically have not touched Dr. Thorne. Again, this is book um, two, three, sorry, it's three in the Barsetshire series. I am 40 pages from the end and 115 minutes from finishing this, and I cannot make myself do this. So this is, um, again, Victorian. Um, it does with a small town where the doctor, Dr. Thorne and his niece and their relations with the, the main family, the Greshams, in this uh, small suburb of off of um, Barchester. So... There are good and bad things about this story, the way things have gone. I just, I, I the wrap up, I'm worried about of things that are going to go wrong. I just, this is, I, I spent half this book rolling my eyes and I've almost seen that this four times. <laughs> so we're, this is the last time I, I have, as I said, I have 115 minutes. I, this week I hope to, 
um, at some point just make myself sit down and do it and get it done just so it's done um, I don't know I mean again I have the whole rest of the Barchester Barsetshire um, series from Anthony Trollope um, and I've I like the Warden and Barchester Towers I just this book just was not for me and I know it's some people's favorite but I oh I had trouble with this all the way through so I don't know if I'm gonna continue that series yet um, but since I didn't pick up that this week, <laughs> I did pick up Dracula by Bram Stoker. So I got um, on Audible Plus right now. You can listen to the one that has Alan Cumming uh, and um, Tim Curry and uh, Simon Vance. And um, it's a really good ensemble cast on, from Audible. So I'm listening to that. And it was really great to listen to that after I'd finished Powers of Darkness. Um, to kind of see the differences and because there are a lot of differences um, in that and that's why I think that book is like really a, a different take on Dracula not what I you know I think there's some good things in there but I meant it's weird how how different it is anyway so this is my really horrible college copy I got for I think three dollars or like 2.95 I finally took the sticker off that I've had on there for like 25 years whatever um I'm gonna buy a new copy because I love this book and I forgot how much I enjoyed it so um it's been so long since I reread it and it it's going in ways I totally forgot it went because I think I've watched the movie from the 90s um more often than I, I ever uh ever read the book so I think and again my cousin loved that movie so when I was um when um, I would go visit him, we almost always watched the Dracula movie. Anyway, point is, is that again, this is the original. I'm enjoying this. Um, published in 1897. Um, yeah, the audio is really good. So again, I'm about, I think about a hundred pages from the end. Yeah, uh, I got about a hundred pages, and I think that's about three plus hours. So I'm gonna listen to that this this week during work when I have time. Uh, and try to get that done. So I'm really, really enjoying that. So that that's a that's a good read, and that's what I'm actually enjoying on the audio. And then my hold came in for uh, Exit Stratagem Strategy by Martha Wells, which is book four in the Murder Di Diaries. So I'm just trying to finish out well, at least the first four. I know there's another a novel and another short novella um after it but i'm not sure i'm gonna get to those we'll see but i want to at least finish out the the first four um because this is where things are kind of coming to a head of everything that's happened in the first three so this again this is a space um uh sci-fi th sorry that follows Murderbot, who is a sec unit who has um broken his governor uh, its governor's training or uh, tra you know it's a governor that controls it and uh, it has gone on a little like <laughs> a little quest and has now coming it's coming back full circle to the people who were in the first book so very I really am enjoying it I just I'm not I'm not super like it's not like the best thing ever but it's like it's fun and uh, as I said I was enjoying Dracula more so I still have I think two and a half hours of this one so um, I will try to get that done also this next week just to be done because it is a library book or a library audio so I want to give it back um I think that's oh and then the book I started last night is Kill Creek by Scott Thomas so I did want to pick up some horror something spooky um this month and so um this is a book that I've been staring at for the last I think two years or so and I finally bought it I don't know if I can't remember if I bought it this year or last year um Anyway, so I thought, you know, what? I really want, I went like purposely to buy this book that one day and then I hadn't read it. So again, it's, that's typical of me. So uh, this follows um, four um, horror writers who are asked to come to a, a, well, a house that is considered haunted on Kill Creek. And it's, um, they are there for kind of this interview with this internet guru guy who, you know, does these huge events. And he wants to put on that, you know, let have the four horror novelists who, you know, try to scare us. Let's try to, you know, see if they get scared in this old house. And it's only the four of them and uh, the main, the guy who got them there and then uh, another woman who is the photographer. So they just, as I said, I'm about um, 90 pages in and they just got there. So um, it was a lot of setup, but I think it, um, 
get to know, we get to know two of the characters really well. We get their POVs, um, Sam and Morris. Um, Morris is a woman who um, is a horror writer, so she's 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 hardcore. Anyway, and I like Sam, so we'll see what happens. But anyway, um, I'm enjoying this so far. Um, you said I don't read as much horror as I used to. I used to read a lot more. So I just wanted to read at least this one, um, hopefully this year for October. So um, I'm hoping to get a lot of that done today and maybe finish up tomorrow if I don't get done today. It just matters because I still have 300 pages. So 320 pages. So I probably won't finish this today, but I'm going to, I'm, I'm, in, I'm enjoying this and I'm glad I got at least this one off my shelf because um, again, I went to the store purposely for this book that one day, whatever day that was, and it's still been on my shelf. So I'm just, <laughs> sorry, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Apologize. Um, anyway, so I'm reading that. So um, what I'm going to read in the next week, as I said, I'm probably going to finish that. I have a whole bunch of books I still want to read for Victober. I have a couple more. Another horror book, uh, maybe one by Stephen King, and then also maybe, um, or, uh, you know, I have some historical spooky fiction, you know, horror, you know, some, some gothic tales, some gothic ones, um, gothic tales I'm going to talk about in a second, um, but that's kind of, um, so I don't know what I'm going to feel like after Kill Creek. I might want to go right back to a Victorian novel, or, or I might want to pick up something else. I'm really letting myself mood read, um more right now that I think I just need to I because I totally knocked off both the big books that I was gonna read this month I just went like no I'm not reading those um I decided not to read Oliver Twist I read the first page and I went nope that's not for me right now and then I picked up um something else and I don't remember what day that was but it was like no we're not reading that and I do feel like I read something else but it's not here anyway but Gothic Tales by Elizabeth Gaskell is the group read for Victober this year. And I had started it. So I um, had read 60 pages of this, I think, two years ago. I'm not positive. I can't remember what year I did it. And I didn't finish it. So um, the audiobook just came out on the 21st. So I used a credit to get it. I just, like, I don't think I'm ever going to get through this if I don't. And I really want to get to Lois the Witch because everybody talks about that one. And I was partway through. I just started the Poor Claire when I finished. And I think, I, yeah, I read, like... Yeah, I read the first three stories um, that year and then started The Poor Claire and then set it down. So um, I know that these are not the best of Elizabeth Gaskell, but they're ones I still want to add to what I've read and stuff. So I'm going to listen to them after I finish um, the other three books. I'm hoping I still have enough time to at least uh, listen to part of this. This will probably go into November, but I, I do want to at least start it hopefully in October, but we'll see. So that is all the books um real quick on my nifty little <laughs> thing here i get to mark two more demon dfs not that i want to but i did and then i did i finished i'm gonna as i said i'm counting my well okay it is a it's a plus it's a two at 1900 plus because it was 1900 to 1901 the powers of darkness so that's where i'm gonna count that and then i did continue a series and so i think that's it of all the stuff i track I mean, and technically, well, I'm not going to count the ebook because it was just part of an ebook. It's not the full thing. And um, technically, I tried a five star prediction, but I DNF'd it. <laughs> so that didn't go so well. Um, so that's kind of where the board is kind of, kind of all over the place this time. Anyway, so um, what are you guys reading? How is your reading going for October? Um, as I said, it's really rainy today. If you can tell, it's really that my lights do it a lot more work than normally to get the outside light, but not too much today. So um, anyway, I um, hope you guys are um, enjoying their, your reading, um, and uh, let me know how you're doing. And I, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.